okay uh, so sh this is a new chapter normal probability distribution uh, in previous chapter we discuss about probability distribution and um, in this particular section uh, we are going to talk about a standard normal distribution so uh, a normal distribution is called a standard normal if you know it has three different uh, properties first it should be bell shaped uh, for the standard normal distribution, the mean should be zero, standard deviation should be one. And then in this section, we're going to uh, learn how to use, you know, that bell shift graph uh, for finding the area under the curve, which is also, you know, can be uh, seen as a probability or relative frequency. So these are the things we're going to discuss here. Uh, and then also we're going to use z-score, you know, for finding uh, uh, those uh, probabilities and area under the graph. So first of all, let's just start with the normal distribution. What does normal distribution mean? So any probability distribution is called normal if a continuous random variable has a distribution with a graph that is symmetric and bell shaped We say that it is normal distribution. This is the you know equation we can use to represent that curve and uh, actual curve would be look like this the meaning of this is if you collect the data then uh, if it's a normal distribution then if mu is your average value then you would see you know half of the data on the left side and other half to the right side and then eventually it will give you this uh, bell shaped symmetric Symmetric means uh, same image on the left and right side uh, curve. Okay, so that's the normal distribution. So to uh, whenever you uh, try to visualize about normal distribution, whenever we think about normal distribution, always think about uh, this bell shaped curve. This curve actually represents data. Okay, and this middle of the curve, this point is actually your mean. Okay. And then as you can see that this line will divide this curve into two equal pieces. That's why it's called normal distribution. There is another distribution called uniform distribution. Uh, properties of uniform distribution, uh, as you can see here, the area under the graph of a continuous probability distribution is equal to one. So when you try to plot the graph of uniform distribution, the area under the curve should be always equal to one. There is a correspondent between area and probability. So probabilities can be found by, by uh, identifying the corresponding area in the graph using this formula for the area of a rectangle. We are going to you know, see some examples and by using that example, you can see the meaning of you know, this, uh, this different type of uh, distribution. Okay, one more thing, a continuous random variable has a uniform distribution if its values are equally spread over the range of possible values. The graph of uniform distribution results in a rectangular shape. So always, whenever you try to plot the graph of uniform distribution, uniform means it should be equal. So uh, the graph would be look like this, uh, rectangular. So the curve uh, is also called density curve. The graph of any continuous probability distribution is called density curve. And any density curve must satisfy the requirement that the total area under the curve is exactly one. So like uh, we use, uh, you know, uh, the, the normal distribution, this is the bell shaped normal distribution, the area under the curve of, you know, this area under this curve is assumed to be one. And then probability, uh, you know, that area actually represents the probability of, uh, you know, getting any variable or any events. We're going to see some examples here. So the graph of any continuous probability distribution is called density curve. This is a density curve. Even for the, you know, if you go back to that uniform distribution, this is also density curve. Okay. And then the requirement is, uh, must satisfy the requirement that the total area under the curve is exactly one. Because the total area under any density curve is equal to one, there is a corresponding between area and probability. Okay. So we can always interchange uh, between area and probability. How do you do that? How do you find it? That's what we're going to discuss further. So there is another distribution called standard normal distribution. This is the same normal distribution, but there is a one more requirement and that is the mean should be zero 
and then a standard deviation would be one for normal distribution. So if you have a normal distribution, meaning a bell shaped uh, distribution, and then if the mean of that distribution is zero and a standard deviation is one, that normal distribution is called standard normal distribution. The total area under the curve is always equal to one. So we can find the areas and probability for different reasons under a normal model uh, using technology or using some you know table given table if you check your textbook there is a table called a2 table I'm going to show you that uh, while doing some problems from the homework you can either use the technology like TI 8384 calculator or uh, table for finding the areas or probabilities uh, so yeah so here is the formula if you are trying to use a TI 8384 calculator this is the formula we're going to use normal cumulative distribution function that's called normal CDF. I'm going to show you how to use it. It takes these inputs and it will take, um, you know, the lower G score, upper G score and uh, standard deviation. Uh, if you are using, uh, you know, normal standard normal distribution, then this mu would be zero and then standard deviation would be one by using this where we can find out the area under the curve, which also represents the probability. If you want to find the G-score using the area under the curve, there is another formula called Invnerve. I'm going to use this, you know, functions on TI-83 plus calculator, and I'm going to show you how you can use them, okay? And also the table. I'm not uh, a fan of using table, but uh, at least I'm going to show you how you can use it, okay? So, um, yeah, so whenever you try to use a table, make sure that table always consider we are playing with a standard normal distribution. That means the average is zero and a standard deviation mean is zero and a standard deviation is one. Okay. Table is uh, on two pages. You can find the table for positive G-score and negative G-score. And each value in the body of the table is cumulative area from the left up to the vertical boundary above the specific G-score. So if there is a if there is a G score, let's say this is the G score. Let's say for example it's a one uh, G score. Then if you try to use the table for this G score, it's going to give you the area under the curve to the left of uh, this G score. But if you use the technology, then that's a different story. I'm going to show you how to use the te technology. Okay. So yeah, that's the table or technology. So these are the some other helpful tool we might use for finding this area under the curve or the G-score. I'm not going to use uh, all of them, but I'm going to show you how to use TI-83 or 84 calculator and uh, the table if it's provided there, okay? So gener generalized rule, the area corresponding to the reason between two G-scores can be found by finding the difference between the two areas, area found in Excel or table A2. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use a uh, TI-83. So instead of using Excel or A2, which is the manual way, I'm going to use technology TI-83-84 calculator. Okay. Do not try to memorize a rule or formula for this case. Okay. So let's get back to the notation. Uh, this notation means probability of uh, denotes the probability that the G score is between A and B. So let's say you have uh, standard normal distribution um, standard normal distribution here and there is a g-score z1 there is another g-score z2 and if you want to find out uh, the area under this uh, under the curve from this g-square to this one then uh, this is the notation we can use this notation means denotes the probability that the g-score is greater than a remember the probability or area under the curve they denotes the same thing this notation means uh, the probability that the G-score is less than A. Finding the G-score from known areas. So I'm going to use uh, no Excel, nothing. I'm going to use TI-8384 calculator for finding the G-score from the area. I'm going to show you an example. So, But there are a bunch of ways. So that's what uh, you know I have given here. You can also use Excel. You can also use StatCrunch. Uh, Okay, there is one more thing we have to find in this section that's called critical value for the standard normal distribution. Remember, 
we can only find the critical value uh, for the standard normal distribution. A critical value is a z-score actually on the borderline separating those z-score that are significantly low or significantly high. The expression z, uh, you know, in this alpha denotes the z-score with an area of alpha to its right. So let's say z uh, 0. Point, uh, you know, um, let's say 0, 0.5 this means it represents uh, denotes the g-score with an area of alpha to the right so you are trying to find a g-score such that to the right of that g-score the area is supposed to be 0 0.05 that is the meaning of this notation g alpha okay so now let's go and try to uh, you know do some examples while doing the examples I'm going to come back here and then use all these uh, definitions or uh, meaning or this formula uh, while solving the problem okay so one more time it's a, the standard normal distribution let's go to uh, homework problem let's look at the first problem here what's wrong with the following statement because the digits 0 1 2 3 4 5 dot 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 up to 9 are the normal results from lottery drawings such randomly selected numbers have a normal distribution okay that's not true because uh, the chances of getting these numbers from 0 to 9 they are equally likely so instead of normal distribution it should be uniform distribution uniform distribution happens if you have the chances equally likely chances so uh, you can find out that information here what is that let's read um, the first one it is not a randomly selected digits that have a normal distribution but rather the chances of winning the lottery since the probability of each digit being selected is equal lottery di digits have a uniform distribution not a normal distribution this is the right option okay let's go to next pro next problem Okay, here is the example where you can see, hey, where we can use a uniform uh, distribution. The waiting times between, uh, between a subway departure schedule, this is a real life example, real problems, okay? The waiting times between a subway departure schedule and an arrival of a passenger are uniformly distributed between 0 and 5. So, um, so um, here is the thing. Let me just use a couple of... Um, empty uh, blank pages here so that I can so what they are saying here in this particular problem if you try to collect the data for the waiting time uh, waiting time as you can see here we can divide our uh, data we can distribute our data uh, uniformly between 0 minute to 5 minutes so here is the time waiting time so uh, between a subway departure schedule and arrival of the passenger. It may be zero minutes, it may be one, two, three, four, five, or anything in between, okay? So uh, find the probability that a randomly selected passenger has a waiting time less than 1.75. So this is uniformly distributed. Uniformly distributed means equal chance. From zero minute to five minute, the waiting time, whatever waiting time we are giving here, they have the equal chance. So what is the probability of finding, um, if you randomly select a passenger, what is the probability that the waiting time for that passenger is less than 1.75 minutes? So you want to find out what is the probability of, uh, if you randomly select uh, a passenger, what is the probability that the waiting time for that passenger is less than 1.75, okay? so. Remember, for any distribution we are using here, uh, for the density curve, the total area has to be 1. If you try to draw a uniform distribution here, or any distribution here, the area under the curve has to be 1. For In case of uniform distribution, it's a rectangular. It has to be rectangular. So we know that the length of this rectangle is going from 0 to 5, which is, what is the length? Length is... Uh, final point minus initial point which is 5 so what should be the height of this rectangle to uh, to have area 1 so we know the area is you know the area is area of that rect uh, rectangle is 1 
So area means length times height. So length is 5, then height is, you know, if this length is 5, then what is the height? Height is 1 over 5, right? Uh, if uh, length is, what is that? Okay, so if uh, length times height is 1 and length is 5 times height equal 1, so height of this, you know, rectangle is 1 over 5. So this is how we uh, draw height is 1 over 5. Now, we would like to find out the probability of waiting time uh, if you randomly select a person whose uh, waiting time is less than 1.75. That is what we would like to find, right? Find the probability that a randomly selected passenger has a waiting time less than 1.75. So you can see that 1.75 is somewhere here. We would like to find out the area under the curve, this curve, this area. So what is the area? The area is height, which is 1 over 5, and the length, which is 1.75. So 1.75 times 1 over 5. That gives you area of this portion, which also represents probability, a probability of uh, getting a random person with the waiting time less than 1.75. So if you calculate this value, which is 1.75, 1 point, uh, where is that? 1 point let me just 1.75 times 1 over 5 which is also divide by 5 so the waiting time is 0.35 so the probability is 0.35 uh, not the waiting time sorry if you randomly select a, a person the waiting time for that particular person uh, le the chances of uh, the waiting time for that particular person less than 1.75 is 0.35 which is 35% so let's go here and answer the question. Find the probability that a randomly selected passenger that has a waiting time less than 1.75 is 0.35. Round to the three decimal place. What did I find here? 0.35. Yes. So that's the rounding. Excellent. Let's go to the next problem. Let me choose this one. Okay. Find the indicated g-score so uh, this is the area under the curve which is we know it's a standard normal distribution uh, with the mean zero and standard deviation is one so if you know the area under the curve what is the g-score so as i mentioned here if you go back to um, to my notes here i said there are different ways to find uh, find area using the g-score uh, the one way is you can I use uh, you know that uh, table a2 table if table is not available then you can also use technology so there are two uh, function or uh, the formula we can use uh, in this section the one is normal cumulative uh, distribution function which gives you area under the curve and another one is which takes the area and gives you the g score which is inverse of that normal function so for that in this particular case, we have given area, area under the curve to the right of that G-score is 0 0.8389. We would like to find out the G-score. So when you try to find out that, first of all, go to your TI-8384 calculator, go to second, click second, and then vary VARS, that gives you distribution. And now, that is the distribution function, normal PDF, normal CDF, and then third number is inverse normal. So we're going to hit number three, and we're going to type this area inside here, which is 0.8389, and close this, and enter. That gives you, as you can see here, it's the G-score, but remember, if you, this, this uh, inverse norm, that gives you the that only gives you the g-score if the area to the left of that g-score uh, is given but here in this case the area to the right of the g-score is given as you can look at the graph here the g-score should be negative because it's on the other side of the zero but here we found the positive because we did not use uh, the area properly so to get this actual g-score we need to f use the area to the left of this g-score and now, here is one thing we need to do. If we know the area to the right of the G-score, we can subtract that area from the total area, which is 1. So the area 
you know to the left would be 1 minus the given area which is 0 0.8389 if I subtract that area from 1 this is the area to the left of this g square now I can do the same thing go to the second distribution number 3 and use this area 0 0.1611 which is area to the left of that g square now we are going to get actual value of the g score remember this function inverse normal only takes area to the left of the g score so this is negative point nine eight nine nine round to the two decimal place so it should be point nine nine so it's a negative point nine nine that's the g score for this area okay okay so let's go to next problem let's say number next problem is this one assume that a randomly selected subject is given a bone density test there is a, a you know test called bone density test i think in this test measures how st strong the bone is we don't have to worry about that test particularly we just know that it's a it's a you know randomly selected subject which is given some kind of test those test score are normally distributed with the mean zero and a standard deviation of one whenever you have a normally distributed uh, you know uh, uh, distribution of data with the mean zero and a standard deviation one that is actually standard normal distribution draw a graph and find the probability of a bone density test score greater than 0.5 so you need to find out uh, uh, draw a graph and find the probability of bone density test score greater than 0.5 so you need to find out the 0.5 to the right greater than 0.5 so as you can see here this is the 0.5 and this is the curve under under the uh, area under the curve which is greater than 0.5 so this is um, actually area means always keep in mind for the standard normal distribution area means uh, area under the curve means it's a probability so probability greater than 0.5 uh, can uh, you know you can see here that is uh, option b excellent now what is the probability actually so if the g score is 0.51 what is the probability how do you find the uh, probability and that's where we are going to use this function called normal cdf so for that you go to second variance normal cdf means number two remember this function takes four different uh, inputs lower value upper value mu and sigma this mu is a uh, you know uh, the mean sigma is the standard deviation if you don't use this if the mean is zero and standard deviation is one which is actually you know standard normal distribution then you do not have to use this information okay you can just ignore that and you can only you can only use this to uh, to lower and upper uh, value what does it mean so this normal cdf gives you the area between lower and upper g score so if you have two value it gives you area between lower and upper so in this case in this particular problem we are interested to find the area to the right of 0.51 so we have the lower value which is 0.51 we don't have the upper value so we are going to use very huge number for the upper value we know that after you know after some point it's going to be uh, nothing so if you use let's say thousand for upper upper uh, upper value then still it gives you uh, approximate result so normal cdf the lower one is 0.51 and upper one is choose anything very huge number that means uh you know anything somewhere here so eventually it will approximate the area under the curve so if you hit enter this is the area under the curve which is 0 0.3050 which is actually represents the probability uh of you know uh for that bone density test score greater than 0.51 so it's a 0 0.3050 0 0.3050 0 0.3050 that's how we can use that uh normal cdf function in uh in uh in this calculator okay 
Okay, so let's go to next problem. Let's say uh, problem number 20. Assume that the reading, okay, here is the, here is the table you have given. Okay, you can use this Jisco table or maybe somewhere you already, yeah. So here is the Jisco table. You can always use, uh, if it's given there, you can always use that table. Maybe it's already uh, in previous problem also, I, we can use table if it's given there. Okay, here's the thing. So uh, find the indicated G-score. We would like to find out the G-score and to the left of the G-score, the area under the curve is 0 0.9812. There are two ways we can do because we have, uh, we need to find out the G-score. So we can always go second and this variance and number three, which gives you inverse of the area, inverse of normal, inv, norm means it takes the area and it gives you the G-score. So I'm going to put the area to the left. Always it takes area to the left of that G-score. Then the answer is 2.079188. That's the G-score. But you can also find that answer using the table we're talking in, uh, you know, the table uh, A2 we're talking here. Uh, I do not recommend you to use uh, to you to use the table instead of table always use calculator that gives you more accurate value but you know you can all uh, you can use the table as well so to use the table as you can see here as you know um, in this particular problem the area to the left is 0.9812 so what do you do you go here and you just find out 0.98 so for the first column, if you go here, 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.9 is here. But we need 0.9812. So for 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.08 is somewhere here. So 0 0.9 from the first column and then 0 0.08 from the first row that gives you combinedly the value here this value this value is your g score so what is the value the value is point oh no 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 i'm uh, making mistake here we would like to find out the g score here so we need to find out the area point nine eight one two so what is that area so the area point nine eight two the this 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 value you have given inside this table is the area the G score is coming from the first column and then first row. So we are looking for the area 0.9812. So go here, 0.9 starts somewhere here, 0.98. So 0.98 start in the column 2.1. You see that? 0.9812. 1, 2 start somewhere here. Yes, look at here. This is the value. 0.98. 0.9812 this is the area and this is for g score 2.2.08 so 2.08 the g score 2.08 gives you 0.9812 so that's what we found g score 2.08 and from the table yes for the g score 2.08 the area is 0.982 so here we have to put 2.08. If using the table was not, uh, you know, something you would like to do, then always use this uh, calculator. Okay, let's go down here one more time. This is the problem we're talking. Uh, assume that the readings readings on the thermometers are normally distributed with the mean zero and the standard deviation one. A thermometer is randomly selected and tested. Draw a sketch and find temperature reading corresponding to P93. P93, probability of, uh, you know, that uh, 93rd percentile, 93rd percentile. This is the temperature uh, reading separating the bottom 93 from the top 7%. So meaning uh, to the left, the area under the curve is 93 and to the right, the area under the curve is, uh, what is that? Uh, seven, uh, seven percent. Okay, so which one represents that? This one, 0.93, so 
P93 is the 30, 39, 93rd percentile. This is the temperature reading separating the bottom 93% from the top 7%. So look at here. This one, if you go click here, you can see that this is the line which separates uh, bottom 93 to the top 7%. Okay. What is that? This one? What is this? So what is P93? Draw a sketch and find the temperature reading corresponding to P93. Okay. Okay, so here the answer you can see that because we are trying to find out the area under the curve to the left is 93. So it separates this P93 separates the bottom 93% to the top 7%. That's why the answer is this one. The temperature for P93 is approximately okay. So uh, to find out the uh, the temperature here, it's actually we're trying to find out the G score. Okay, we know the area to the left is 93.93. That is 93%. So for finding the G score, one more time, either we can use um, you know um, what is that called the table. Uh, which is uh, the area is given 0 0.93 so 0 0.93 so you are going to find out inside this table 0 0.93 0 0.90 is here 0 0.91 is here 0 0.93 starts somewhere here okay this is the first one 0 0.9306 for this the g score is 1.4 from the first column and then this row 0 0.08 so it's a 1.48 1.48 1 1 1 Using the table, it's a 1.48, but I am going to use uh, I'm going to use this uh, calculator. Uh, this one is inverse norm, which is number three, and then the area to the left is given, which is 0 0.93, which means 93%. It's the 1.4757, so which is approximately, if you round it to the two decimal place, it's a 1.48. That's what we found using the table as well. 1. For eight. So basically, as you can see here, we can answer this temperature question even uh, finding uh, with, with finding the G score. Okay. Okay, that's uh, okay. The next problem. Which of the following is not a not a descriptor of a normal distribution of a random variable? Okay, uh, which of the following is not a descriptor of normal distribution of random variable? Choose the correct answer below. The graph of the distribution is symmetric. We are trying to find out which one is not uh, not uh, you know normal distribution. The graph is center uh, center around zero. Remember, we are just looking for normal distribution. Uh, the graph is center around the mean. The graph of the distribution is bell shaped. So we know that the graph of the distribution is bell shaped for the normal distribution. The graph is centered around the mean. That is also true. The graph of the distribution is symmetric. That is also true. But the, the graph is centered around zero. That is not true uh, because that's for the standard normal distribution. Okay. I want to do one more problem for, uh, for this type of notation. What is that? critical value this one g alpha so what is that problem let me find out that problem okay this one find the indicated critical value z uh, you know 0 0.05 remember this this notation means it denotes the g score with an area of alpha to its right so in this particular problem we would like to find out the g score such that area uh, to the right of that G score is uh, 0 0.05. Okay, so if the area to the right is 0 0.05, so let's say this is, uh, we want to find out this G score, such that area to the right of this G score is 0 0.05, which is 5%. So what is the area to the left? If to the right it's a 0 0.05, to the left it should be 0 0.95. Because altogether the area is total is one, so to find the G score, we can again use the same inverse inverse function, which is second variance number three 
invnar function but we need to put 0 0.95 because that takes the area to the left of that g score so the answer is 1.644 and if you round it to the three decimal place it's a 1.64 three decimal place so 1.645 1.645 if you want to use the, uh, you know, the table, we are looking for area to the, uh, you know, to the to the to the to the left is 0 0.95. So you have to go and find out 0 0.95 inside this table, which is 0 0.95 is uh, somewhere here. Yes, this one, 0 0.9495, 0 0.9505. So the G score is 1 1.6, 1.645. 1.645 okay so that's a standard normal distribution